When I retired at 44, I drifted aimlessly through the first 12 months. And for the next four years after that, as I approached 50 years of age, I made a series of wrong turns, hitting roadblocks and cul-de-sacs along the way. It wasn't until I made some significant changes in my early 50s and quit doing things that had served me quite well in my 20s and 30s before I started having a really good time in retirement. In this video, I'm diving into nine practices that you should quit if you want to live a more rewarding and fulfilling life and enjoy your retirement. Quitting these nine things is backed by extensive scientific research and I have prioritised them on the impact they will have on your retirement. At number nine through to number one, quitting them has made a huge difference in my life and I think it'll make a difference in yours too. If you stick around to the end, I'll share the most important thing that you need to quit if you want to have some fun and enjoy your retirement. So what are these nine things that you should quit? Let's dive into them. But before we do that, let's talk about the realities of retirement. Retirement often comes with a lot of expectations. I imagined endless free time, relaxation and the freedom to do what I wanted whenever I wanted. But the reality was quite different. I actually found myself feeling very lost and unfulfilled for quite some time. That's why it's so important to reassess your priorities when you retire. What truly matters to you? What do you want to spend your time on? Hopefully this video will help you figure that out. The transition from a work-focused life to a more relaxed retirement lifestyle can be challenging, but by letting go of certain bad practices that you've picked up throughout your working life and which may have served you well like they did with me in my 20s and 30s, you can make this transition smoother and a lot more enjoyable. It's all about letting go of old habits and mindsets from your working years. They might have served you well once upon a time, but I can assure you that they won't serve you well in retirement. Retirement is an opportunity to embrace a new mindset and a new way of living, one that is more in keeping with the freedom that it gives you. Okay, so having got that out of the way about retirement, let's get into these nine things that you should quit. In at number nine is quit living with regret. We've all made mistakes, but but holding on to regrets can only weigh us down. Instead, focus on the present and the future. Don't beat yourself up about things that have happened in the past. You can't change them. Just learn from them. Treat them as experiments. One thing I learned was to forgive myself for my past decisions and look forward to the new opportunities that retirement brings. Letting go of regret will significantly impact on your mental well-being and your life satisfaction. So quit it now before it's too late. I'll give you an example from my life. For a long time, I actually regretted selling my business at 44 and retiring. For the first few years, I was lost and I lacked a sense of purpose. Retirement brought obvious benefits, but for me, they didn't really compensate at that time. That was purely in my mind. It was my mindset. I can't explain it now, but at the time, I had a sense of unfinished business and there was always a nagging thought in my mind that I had one more in me, when in reality, I had a great future ahead of me in retirement. A chance to travel and a chance to spend a lot of time with my young son, who's not so young now, he's 25, but back then he was seven. But I couldn't get rid of this nagging feeling that the business hadn't really fulfilled its full potential. This feeling was exacerbated because a few years later, the new owners had run the business into the ground and most of the staff had left or found jobs elsewhere or even launched their own businesses. I couldn't shake this regret off. It clung on to me all the way into my late forties and even into my early 50s. I allowed it to drag me back into the business world in a more hands-on role. And I have to be honest, that felt like coming out of retirement, even though it was only one or two days a week. It was never full time, but it still carried significant pressure. It really wasn't what I should have been doing with my retirement years, and I hated it. But finally, I woke up to the fact that I was harboring a silly regret. Now I'm in my 60s, that regret has long since been banished. Now I know what my purpose in life is. Losing this regret has helped me focus on making the most out of my current situation and making plans for an exciting future. All I'm interested in now is enjoying the benefits that retirement brings and not being sucked back into the pressures of the working world. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to still do a little bit of work. I like to work one or two days a week. It keeps my mind sharp and it keeps me in the game and that's important to me. But non-work activities like socializing, hobbies, travel and hanging out with my family are far more important 
than spending hours at work. I urge you to embrace your journey by letting go of the past. You'll find that living a life free of regrets is a good way to live life. At number eight, I've got quit pretending to be someone you're not. Authenticity is the key to happiness. When I retired, I felt pressure to fit into certain social circles. I started hanging out with people because to be honest, I was just feeling a bit lonely. I missed the human interaction that came with work. I started hanging out with people who weren't particularly interested in my hobbies, so I became interested in theirs. I played golf, even though it's a sport that's always made me angry. Don't get me wrong, I love watching golf. It's a great sport, but I just can't swing a golf club to save my life. Most of the time, I end up throwing them into the bushes or up a tree or snapping the odd putter over my leg. That's how I feel about golf. But I got sucked into playing golf with a bunch of blokes that I'd met. I also started going to watch rugby and cricket, two sports that I've never had any interest in. They've always bored me to death. Why did I do it? Because they invited me and the alternative was to spend time on my own. And I just hadn't got comfortable with that yet but I never really fitted in. I always felt like an outsider, a person who didn't really get it. I didn't really get rugby. I didn't really get cricket. And as I said earlier, I hated playing golf. It's a good walk spoiled, right? Cricket? Now that's boring. Rugby? Far too much testosterone for my liking. I'm just not into that warrior mentality that comes with rugby. But over time, I realised that being true to myself was more fulfilling, even if that meant spending more time on my own than I had on anticipated. So walking a golf course was replaced with walking and hiking in the hills on my own, which by the way is great for your mental health. It's a fantastic form of mindfulness and exercise too. Cricket and rugby were replaced with going horse racing with friends who enjoyed that sport as much as I did. I found that being my authentic self reduced my stress levels enormously. Not only that, it also enhanced my mental health and I had a lot more fun. It was way better than just trying to fit in with people. Now I embrace who I am and my relationships are much stronger for it. So be yourself and enjoy the freedom that retirement offers. At number seven, I've got quit spending money on things that don't align with your values. Now that's a real mouthful, isn't it? But here's what I mean by that. As we age, it's important to focus on what truly matters. And in my humble opinion, that is not spending money on cars, motorbikes, racing bikes, watches and clothes. Retirement is the time to spend your hard earned pennies on experiential things like traveling. I'll admit when I was younger, in my 20s and 30s particularly, I used to spend money on things to impress other people, particularly cars. I wanted to show off how successful I was. Boy was I insecure. I had a real chip on my shoulder. I'd come from a working class family background where there was little money. Anything I bought, I'd always had to work hard and save up for and buy it myself. My mum and dad didn't have a lot of money and they certainly didn't have the money to buy the Oxford bags and Doc Martens and David Bowie records that I wanted when I was a teenager. I had to work weekend jobs to pay for those things myself. And that period of my life, short of money, always having to work hard to get it, it never really left me. So by the time I was in my 30s and I had some business success, I started showing off. I bought the usual crap, cars, watches, expensive clothes. By the time I hit 50, I was completely over that phase of my life. Thank goodness. Now I invest in experiences and creating memories. I love to travel and explore, going on micro adventures to cities I haven't visited or a part of the country that I haven't yet experienced. Even here in the UK, there are lots of places that I still haven't visited. Cornwall and Devon, for example, and even the Scottish highlands and islands which I'm planning on visiting so that I can indulge one of my passions which is Scottish whiskey. Adventures don't always mean traveling to far-flung places. This mindset shift has brought me far greater happiness than spending money on cars. Spending on experiences like traveling with loved ones creates lasting memories and truly aligns with my values. Reassess your spending habits and see how you can realign them with what you truly care about. At number six, I've got quit saving unnecessarily. There comes a point in life when you've just got to stop saving and start spending. And I believe that time is early retirement, the first 10 to 15 years. Oversaving can actually reduce your happiness. It's hard to enjoy life if you're worried about money and penny pinching all the time. Once you've got enough, and that's a personal number for each of us, for some 
some people it could be a £200,000 pension pot, others it might be half a million, a million, even two million. Whatever your number is, it's time to enjoy the fruits of your labour. It's important to phase your spending as you age. Spend more in your 50s than you do in your 80s. I have to admit that I've never been a type for saving for a rainy day. People who know me do say that money has a tendency to burn a hole in my pocket and I think they're probably right. However, in retirement I quickly shifted my mindset from spending on stuff to spending on experiences. My wife and I spent significantly more money from the age of 44 to 54 than we have from 54 to 63. I know plenty of people who are overly cautious with their money and their savings. My mother-in-law for one, she's in her mid 80s and she's always saving for a rainy day and I must admit I just don't get the point but she just doesn't listen. She'd rather be looking at her bank statement than enjoying the last decade or so of her life. But hey, that's her decision. Thank goodness I'm not like that. And thankfully, neither is her daughter, my wife. I can't understand anybody penny pinching when they're sat on top of a decent pension pot. They don't seem to understand how precious time is, denying themselves life's pleasures just in case a disaster happens, which of course, it very rarely does. The only thing that I can guarantee them that will happen is their healthful decline in their 80s and they'll be lucky to even make it to 90. Then of course, the government can have their cash swallowed up to pay Pay for their nursing home. What a waste. So whether it's taking up a new hobby or traveling, don't be frightened to spend a little to enhance the quality of your life. You've worked hard for this, so enjoy it. You can't take it with you, right? Number five is quit neglecting learning. Engaging in continuous learning keeps your mind sharp. Just because you've retired and stopped working doesn't mean you've stopped learning. Having lifelong learning as a habit is a great thing. I recently took up YouTubing and I've found it incredibly rewarding. I'm learning new things every day. I'm still a complete novice when it comes to producing these videos. I'm learning how to shoot them better, how to script them, how to edit. I'm learning about sound quality. It's all new to me. I'm loving it. It's a great hobby. And not just that, it also gets my knowledge and my opinions out there to the world to share to help other people. And that is my life purpose right now. Helping others who are just a little bit further on the path behind Behind me. I aim to improve every video in some way, even if I just manage that 1%. 100 videos, that's 100% improvement. Not just that, lifelong learning can lead to new social connections. My video channel has enabled me to chat with people from Singapore to Scotland, and I've no doubt that I'll make new friends in the long haul. So keep challenging yourself, learn new things, keep your brain going, keep your mind sharp. In at number four, I've got quit spending time with negative people. Positive social interactions are absolutely critical for well-being. In the past, I have spent time with people who drained my energy. Now I prioritize supportive and uplifting relationships. The people you surround yourself have a big impact on your well-being. Negative people drain your energy and affect your mood. I've had to distance myself from some people who were constantly negative. It wasn't easy. Some of them have been friends for years, but it was essential to maintain my mental health and be happy in retirement. I haven't always got Got this right. I've been caught out a few times hanging out with people whose best interests were theirs, not mine. And ultimately, they dragged me down. Even as recently as a couple of years ago, when I was looking to expand my coaching experience, I partnered with a very well-known organization who promised much but delivered very little. The only thing I got from them was regular contact with some pretty negative people in their headquarters. Although I did make a very good friend from this time, so it wasn't all bad. Seek out positive positive relationships. Spend time with people who uplift and support you. These relationships are crucial for your well-being. Build a supportive social circle, whether it's friends, family or community groups. Having a network of positive people around you is absolutely essential in retirement. Meet new people by engaging activities that enable you to meet like-minded individuals. Join clubs, take classes, volunteer, whatever works for you. These activities can help you build new and positive relationships. Surround yourself with people who bring out the best in you. It will make a massive impact on your mental health and happiness in retirement. At number 
number three is quit taking time for granted. Time is our most precious resource and it's something we can't get back once it's gone. Studies show that people who value their time tend to be happier and more fulfilled in retirement. After retiring, it's crucial to accept that your time is limited and you must make the most of it and enjoy your life to the fullest. If not now, when? Prioritise activities that bring you joy, whether it's spending time with loved ones, pursuing hobbies or simply relaxing. Make sure you spend your time doing things that make you happy. Consider creating a bucket list. Write down all the things you've wanted to do and start checking them off. This will give you a sense of purpose and excitement too. And don't forget to live in the moment. Be mindful. Appreciate the small joys in life, whether it's a beautiful sunset, a good book or a quiet morning coffee. These are the moments that truly make life special. At number two, I've got quit worrying. Worrying excessively can take a real mental toll on you. It's important to recognise when worry is becoming a problem. Focus on what you can control. Live in the moment. Don't worry about things that have happened in the past or things that might happen in the future. Just concentrate on enjoying now. There is no point worrying about things that are out of your hands. I see far too many people worrying about the political situation in their country. It's just pointless. Let go of worries. Focus on life. Don't worry about things that are out of your hands. If you're finding it hard to stop worrying, try some mindfulness techniques. One of the best that I found is to go for a long walk and just focus on the awesome things that you'll encounter along the way. It's even better if you take that walk in nature among the trees. Maintain a positive mindset and surround yourself with positive people. That will also make a huge difference. If I find myself worrying, I usually give myself a pinch and start focusing on good things instead. And one thing that I do to stop myself on the worry front is I don't don't watch the news or read any newspapers if I can help it. Far too much doom and gloom for my liking. Excessive worry can lead to anxiety and depression and I don't want that. Not in my retirement years. I'm trying to enjoy myself. I had far too much worry and pressure when I was working. I don't need it in my retirement years too. And neither should you. And finally, the one that you've all been waiting for. My number one thing that you should quit. Quit compromising your health. Your health, both physical and mental are the bedrock of a successful retirement. Without them, you are screwed. So maintain good health through exercise and diet. You can get away with eating crap in your 20s, but you can't get away with it in your 60s. You can get away with a sedentary lifestyle in your 20s and 30s, but you can't get away with it in your 60s, 70s and 80s. It's a simple fact that you need to wake up to. Don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating that you spend hours in the gym pumping iron. All you need to do is get out and have 30 minutes to an hour of walking every day. That is more than sufficient. However, I would advise you that if you're a man over 60, you really should be lifting weights because sarcopenia, the loss of muscle mass, is not a great thing. Have you seen all those people with their walkers and their walking sticks and their little EVs whizzing along the pavements? You don't want to be one of them, do you? I know I don't. I won't lie, I have taken my health for granted. It wasn't until my 50s that I started really taking time to go to the gym and lift weights and started walking. I was a sedentary office rat during my working years and I was a fat rat. I was a good three stone, probably four stone, even at times heavier than I am now and I think the things I neglected in my 20s 30s and even my 40s have come back to haunt me now because I have got gallbladder problems I'm waiting to have my gallbladder out and I'm sure the causes of it are rooted in the bad decisions that I made in my 20s 30s and 40s now that I'm in my 60s I don't make those bad decisions anymore although with a dodgy gallbladder I don't really have a lot of choice in it really. I'm living on salads at the moment, but hopefully for not much longer. I should be operated on in the next month or two. I urge you to take care of your health and enjoy your retirement years. So that's it. Those are the nine things that I think you should quit if you want to have a fun, fulfilling and rewarding retirement. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a comment below. It'd be great to hear from you. I'd be interested in how you've got the best out of your retirement. Watch this video next for the 10 things that I stopped spending my money on in retirement that also had a massive impact on me. Thank you for watching.